Our first example in category three, this is distinct irreducible quadratic. Now the thing is, we don't know what category we're in until you get this thing factored. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor this over here. Get this factored. And it is fair to say, category one was not brutally challenging. Category two is not too bad. You need to pick X to be some other convenient number. Categories three and four, there's sort of a different technique employed here. And so it's going to take a little bit more effort on our part here. See if we can make this happen. So I'm gonna factor this denominator. Again, notice it doesn't matter if the numerator factors. In fact, very often it won't. I'm going to factor out the x, leaving behind x to the second plus 3. And notice this is quadratic. It does not factor. This is an irreducible quadratic expression. All right? So here's our rule. If it's an irreducible quadratic. All right, so what do we have here? We have. Each one of these, I'll, I'll write this expression here. This is 2x squared minus 2x plus 3, right? Is equal to, let me go ahead and write the partial fraction decomposition here. All right, so what do we have? We have an x to the first power. x to the first power. Any linear needs to have an x to the first power. That's fine. Notice this is irreducible. Now, here's the rule for quadratics. Here's the rule for quadratics. Quadratic. This is degree 2. Quadratic. All right? And we need to write this as the denominator is still x squared plus 3. But the numerator is. It could be any linear mx plus b from your very, very early back in basic algebra, mx plus b, or the way we're going to write this as bx plus c. If this is linear denominator, this is constant numerator. If this is quadratic denominator, this is potentially linear in the numerator. Now, it could turn out that B might, we don't know, B might work out to be zero, in which case this falls out, but we need to allow for the possibility. It could turn out that C is equal to zero. That would fall out, but we need to allow for the possibility. You don't know going in what's going to happen coming out, so you allow for both poss that possibility. And so if this is quadratic, if this is quadratic and doesn't factor, this numerator needs to be linear, and it's BX plus C. All right? Now, the procedure next step is very similar. Multiply through by this common denominator. Here, here, and here. That part's the same of same, same. On the left-hand side, the same thing always happens. If this all, both of these cancel with both of these, the left-hand side, you're always left with just the numerator. On the right-hand side, when you multiply by this first term, the x cancels with the x, but the x squared plus 3 remains. When you multiply by this last piece, be sure to put uh, binomials, be sure to put those in parentheses. When you multiply here, the x squared plus 3 and the x squared plus 3 cancels, but you still have this x factor. All right? Now, the choosing of the coefficients is not particularly convenient here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, you could, this could be treated as a mixture, it turns out, but I'm going to show you the, the whole procedure here. When you have uh, category 3 or category 4, category 3, category 4, what you do here is, is not let x equal. It's not let x equal. What you'll do is you'll multiply out the right-hand side. Multiply all this crud out. We have a x to the second plus 3a. Just write that like a variable. So uh, numeric values first, the capital letter second, and the variable last is kind of the standard procedure. So distribute in here. Distribute in here. This is bx squared plus cx. And if you like, you can put that in the right order. ax squared plus bx squared 
plus CX to the first power plus 3A. So now we have second power, first power, constant, right? And now the last piece of the puzzle is this. If you have multiple X squareds, factor out the X squared, but leave it at the back. I'm going to write this as A plus B times X squared. Factor out the X squared, but put it in the back. There is only one X term, and there is only one constant term. If there had been, so let's do this. Here's a what if. What if we have AX squared plus BX squared plus BX plus CX plus 3A? Well, you would factor out the X squared. You would also factor the X out of these two. And then 3A is the only thing left over there. If you had multiple pieces there, you would include those. So factor out the variable, but you use, move, move it to the right-hand side. It just looks better. All right? Let's go back to the actual event here. Now, here's the rule. What we have is a degree 2 polynomial on the left and a degree 2 polynomial on the right, and we know that they're equal. The only way polynomials can be equal, the only way polynomials can be equal is if their corresponding coefficients are equal. If I ask one person to select a polynomial and they select, choose this one, and let somebody else choose a polynomial out of their mind and they choose one, let's suppose they're equal. Well, the only way these two can be equal is if the x squared coefficient is equal to the x squared coefficient here. So the next phrase we use here is called equate coefficients. Equate the coefficients. That is to say, the x squared coefficient on the right must equal the x squared coefficient on the left. I'm going to leave an extra gap here. You'll see why here in a minute. The x squared on the right is equal to the x squared on the left. The x coefficient, which in this case is c, so there's an a column, a b column, and a c column, the x coefficient on the right is equal to the x coefficient on the left. And the constant on the right, that goes in the a column, is equal to the constant on the left. And you solve that system. You solve this system using, I don't care, whatever mechanism you know to solve a system of linear equations, you solve that system. There are there are at least a half dozen on offer. So solve this system using whatever mechanism you want to use to solve that system. It's not very challenging here because a lot of this is straightforward. We already have C. C equals negative 2. Out of this equation, is it clear? Divide both sides by 3. We have A is equal to 1. And if we know A is equal to 1, right? If A is equal to 1, then from this, we, choose, we find out that B is also equal to 1. So A is 1, B is 1, C is negative 2. It's not always that simple, but you solve that system using whatever mechanism you know to solve a system of equations. Once you have these coefficients, it's plug the values back in and you're off to the races. So what do we have here? A was, what was my number? A was 1. And what was B? B was 1 and C is negative 2. If B is 1 and C is negative 2, then that's what we have, I think. That's the natural log rule. That's the natural log rule. Typically, if you have two terms in the numerator, split the numerator. Split the numerator. Split the numerator. Split the numerator means x gets the denominator and negative 2 gets the denominator. Split the numerator. If you have multiple terms in the numerator, typically you will split the numerator. That's a natural log form. That's tangent inverse form. Do we see the x squared? That's a square. This is radical 3 squared. This is tangent inverse form. This is a natural log form. 
tangent inverse form, and this is a, because this is degree two, this is degree one, because this is degree two, this is degree one, that's part of why we want this to be degree one very, back at the very beginning. If this is degree two, this is degree one, this is an ordinary calc one u substitution, let u equal x squared plus three, and it goes right through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this video now because it's getting a little long. I'm going to pick this video up on the very next one. It's a continuation of this problem. I'm going to start with this thing and say this is now equal to here. And then we'll, we'll just finish out the antiderivatives if, in case you need that. If you know how to find the antiderivatives from here, then so much the better. You're good to go. But I'm going to finish out this video on the next one just doing the antiderivatives here. But what do we have? So... Uh, Get the basic equation for category three, category four, district, multiply this whole right-hand side out, gather the coefficients, equate the coefficients, and solve that system. When you solve the system, it's, it's exactly similar to what we've been doing before.